Remember me? Just a minute. <clears throat> the last time we were together, we were talking about getting back to the basics of air traffic control. We discussed the letter B, be sure the runway is open, and saw the procedures Minneapolis Tower uses to ensure they don't clear an aircraft for takeoff or to land on a closed runway. Does anybody remember basic? Anybody at all? B, be sure the runway is open. A, aircraft position verified. S, scan the runway. I, issue clearances using correct phraseology. C. Close the loop by getting an accurate readback. Today we'll be looking at the letter A, aircraft position verified, and S, scan the runway. Mistakes associated with aircraft position verification and scanning are factors in many operational errors. Knowing an aircraft's position, scanning the runway effectively, and coordinating information are all essential skills for any local or ground controller. It is the responsibility of every tower team member to help one another. Local control and ground control have the primary responsibility of scanning, but all members of the tower team should assist with scanning as time permits. Without a doubt, verifying an aircraft's position is a fundamental skill for every controller. It isn't uncommon for an OJT instructor to observe a developmental looking out the wrong window or looking at the wrong taxiway when an aircraft calls. It is highly probable that every controller at some point in time has lost sight of an aircraft they should have readily been able to see. Controllers may feel embarrassed to ask the pilot to save position. However, it is far more embarrassing and hazardous to give control instructions without verifying an aircraft's location, only to learn that your assumption was incorrect. If there is any doubt concerning an aircraft's position, do not hesitate to ask the pilot and positively verify the aircraft's position. The following dramatization is based on an actual incident that occurred at Tucson International Airport on June 2nd 2006. Piper Alpha Hotel Foxtrot requested takeoff from local control 2 on runway 21. Local control 1 responsible for that runway approved local control 2 to use it. Local control 1 did not use the established memory aid, a strip holder marked runway 21 hot and cleared two F-16s for takeoff on runway 11 left, forgetting they had released intersecting runway 21 to the other local controller. Okay, Alpha Hotel Fox is uh, boarding. The Piper rolled in between the two F-16s, as can be seen from the cockpit of the second F-16. Observing this scenario from an air traffic controller's perspective, you can see that some fundamental air traffic skills were neglected. Local Control 1 and Local Control 2 did not verify the positions of these aircraft, nor did they scan their runway effectively or make use of their established memory aids. I've heard there's someone at Philadelphia Tower that has an innovative way of helping developmentals improve their scanning techniques. Let's travel to Philly 
and see the back to basic techniques that they're using. I just had some coffee. So how's the video going? I think it's going pretty well. Uh, okay. In fact, I was just going to come talk to you about this bar concept. Oh really? I've got some time now. I'm on break. You want to talk now? Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, why don't you just tell me how this concept came to be? Well, a couple years ago I had a developmental who was having some problems in the tower with her scanning techniques. She was making some mistakes. So we decided to sit down during the debrief and come up with a solution for it. And what we did was come up with the acronym BAR. What it stands for is Bright, ASD, and Runway. And it's just a three-step scanning technique that if you use each time, you're going to eliminate errors, mistakes, and runway incursions. So it's really worked well for her. And in fact, she just recently certified in the tower, and now she's training down in the radar room. Well, it sounds like a great idea. As a matter of fact, some of the other controllers at Philly are using the bar concept. We refer to it as raising the bar. That's outstanding. An idea like that gets recognized and takes off? I think so, too. Rick, I gotta get going. I'm uh, due back, so we'll have to talk more about raising the bar later. Yeah, okay. can we do that? Yeah, we will. Thanks. 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 All right, Tom. Visual observation is the tower controller's most important resource, accounting for nearly 50% of a controller's time. The ability to rely on direct visual observation represents one of the most significant differences between tower controllers and other air traffic specialties. Sometimes the tower cab design and equipment layout is a hindrance to a controller's ability to effectively scan out the windows without moving about the tower. New technology can draw a controller's attention away from looking out the window, causing them to fixate on equipment. As an agency, we need to continue to strive towards integrating equipment that requires less time looking at keyboards and making entries, which draws attention away from the controller scanning process. Automation certainly has its place, especially in reduced visibility situations. However, it can create complacency and over-reliance on technology, which reduces the time spent looking out the window. Some methods to prevent the hindrance of necessary automation include standardizing equipment from position to position, minimizing blind spots, and where possible, moving equipment that obstructs line of sight. Even after the physical barriers have been eliminated, controllers must know their sight limitations and be able to navigate around them. Philadelphia Tower took a proactive approach to improving their controller's ability to scan the airport. By evaluating what equipment was blocking the controller's view, they worked with Tech Ops and developed a plan that allowed several equipment pieces to be relocated. Air traffic control is not the only profession that requires good scanning techniques. We can learn from other careers not even related to air traffic control. The most successful quarterbacks have been those that have refined a technique for developing a plan, scanning the field, finding the receiver, and completing the pass. 
when the receiver is not in the expected location or the defense has adjusted their coverage, the quarterback must adjust his plan and make the correct decision. Two wide jet pass on one. Two wide jet pass on one. Ray! Ray! Go! Set! What are you looking at, man? I'm wide open. You're throwing it over there and nobody's covering me. If we're gonna go anywhere in this league, you gotta get me the ball, all right? Scanning for air traffic controllers like quarterbacks is a skill that must be learned and practiced constantly. Another profession more closely linked to air traffic control that also requires good scanning techniques is that of a pilot. You know, one of the first things our crews learn is the need for effective scanning. We concentrate our scan on the most critical areas first. This prevents conflicts in the air and on the ground. There are several patterns that can be used in scanning. The most common are from side to side, from center to side, and from near to far. Remember, an aircraft that can be seen clearly seven miles away when viewed directly would have to be as close as seven tenths of a mile to be recognized with peripheral vision. Central viewing only covers about a 10 degree field of view. So overlapping of scanned areas is necessary. Each area should be viewed for at least one to two seconds to detect movement or to locate a specific object being searched. More information about scanning can be found in Chapter 8 of the Aeronautical Information Manual. Whether you're a pilot or a controller, the key is to not fixate on a specific traffic scenario to the point of tunnel vision. When peripheral vision suffers, avoidable traffic conflicts may occur elsewhere. Controllers should incorporate a personal habit of looking at the aircraft to verify its position before issuing control instructions. This is just one way to ensure clearances are issued to the appropriate aircraft. This means looking out the window or when weather conditions require it, using the tower radar systems. The combination of traffic density and the need for split-second timing make the airport surface extremely unforgiving of pilot and controller errors. We have seen what the controllers at Philadelphia Tower have done to raise the bar. They have improved their scanning techniques while also reconfiguring the tower environment to provide controllers better visibility when looking out the tower cab windows. By improving personal scanning habits, 
Controllers can ensure they always know where an aircraft is. This is a must if we're going to improve air traffic safety by getting back to the basics. Let's take a minute and review what we have learned and see if you can employ some of these practices for improving aircraft position verification and scanning at your facility. By employing the technique of looking at the bright, the ASD, and the entire runway, controllers are raising the bar by improving their scanning habits. By making changes inside the tower cab, the visibility for controllers can be greatly increased, allowing for better scanning out the tower windows. We have stressed the need and importance of preventing tunnel vision. We determined that scanning is a technique that must be learned and practiced in order for it to become a habit. If you are ever in doubt of an aircraft's position, don't hesitate to ask. Remember your role as a team member in the tower, and when traffic is light, keep situationally aware of what's going on around you. As simple as it sounds, look at the aircraft to verify its position prior to issuing any control instructions. Philadelphia Tower has implemented several procedures that can be categorized as best practices. Oh, I gotta go. I got a flight to catch. Until next time, keep basic close by. My next stop may be at your facility. If you believe your facility has a unique practice that promotes safety and is proven to lower operational errors, contact your appropriate Terminal Service Area Quality Assurance Office. A. Aircraft Position Verified and S. Scan the Runway is the third part of a series entitled Back to the Basics for Tower Air Traffic Controllers. For more information on best practices in air traffic control, please contact your appropriate Terminal Service Area Training Office.